Because they won't answer you. Judge won't answer you. No way, Pedro. As Del Trotter used to say. No way, Pedro, would a judge answer that question. The judge may suggest calling the policy man. The answer to this is, oh, I see, you're reaching for the muscle. <laughs> All right, must mean you've lost the argument then, mate. Might does not equal right, mate. You're impersonating a judge, mate. So therefore, you are just like me, mate. You've got no authority over me any more than I have authority over you because you're only impersonating a judge unless you're acting under your oath. It may be suggested that you'll be charged with contempt of court. Actually, we'll be seriously looking at contempt of court over this weekend. Um, the reading at the moment is that the only people that could ever be in contempt of court, this is based on a, on a, on a case, a historic case in the UK. The reading at the moment, but I have to confirm this because I haven't, you haven't done it yet, I'm doing it over the weekend, is that um, the only people that could ever be in contempt of court are the clerk of the court, the judge and the magistrate. <laughs> in, a, in a civil case. Now, where you have a civil case where you have a plaintiff and defendant, right? The plaintiff can be in contempt of the defendant. The defendant can be in contempt of the plaintiff, yes. Where, where it's the counsel is the plaintiff and you are the so-called defendant, well, obviously they're in contempt of you, otherwise they wouldn't have taken you there. And you're certainly in contempt of them, otherwise you'd pay them. But you can't be in contempt of court in a civil case. The only people that can be in contempt of court are the magistrates in the club, or the judge. According to the reading, but we've got to read it a little bit more closely, that was just a, a first off. Are they, you know, publishing, you know, the results of it? Now, it may be suggested you're charged with contempt of court, you would then, uh, you could ask uh, civil or criminal, that's, that's in my book, but I did ask. And you can also remind them that they cannot hear any such charge themselves. So they've charged you with contempt of court. Um, fine, but they can't hear that. They can't hear their own accusations. They can't judge their own accusations. That's pretty obvious. If I accuse somebody of something, it's not, and it's, you know, it's a lawful situation. It's not up to me to make a judgment. I've done the accusing. Uh, I could talk about court because I've been in court, I've been in the cells. Um, the important thing to remember is everything is a double-edged sword, and I said this in my Litchfield talk. Um, court cells are not, there are different kinds of prison cells. There's a court cell, there's the cells in police stations, and there's the cells in prisons. And I've been in all three. And there's a difference. Court cells, it's an area with a seat. No loo, no bucket, no nothing. If you want to go to the toilet, you call the security guard and say, I need to go to the loo. And he will then accompany you. And then you maybe you do what I do and say, would you want to sit on my lap? No, no, I don't need to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, police cells a little bit down market, or up market, depending on where you look at it. I mean, they're ship cold places, um, but they do have a loo, or at least a bucket, so you could theoretically stay a few days, maybe a week, maybe the 42 days that is currently um, um, on the statute books. But they're nothing like, nothing like prisons. In prisons, as well, you know, you can have TV in your cell these days if you want to. Um, but the point is that the court cell, the important thing about this is the court cell is just a, somewhere with a seat and bars. It's not geared for even an overnight stay. So if they put you in the cells in a the court, they've got a problem. They've got a problem. If they want to go home. They are not going to leave you in the cell, they can't. So what they'll do is, they'll put you down there to teach you a lesson, and you will sit there. Oh, 
di da di da di da di da di da. Oh, hello. Well, I, I'm a duty solicitor, and um, I, I, I have had a word with their worships, and um, uh, I, I think that if you were prepared to apologise, then um, you know it would be all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they apologise to me, it will be all right. I beg your pardon. I said, if they apologise to me, <laughs> and they will disappear. And five minutes later, one of the magistrates will come down and say, "Are you prepared to apologise? Are you prepared to apologise to me, mate?" Oh well, 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 well. And you'll go up, and they'll carry on, and that's what happened. Because they want to go home. Double-edged sword. <coughs> uh, in either case, sorry, we're still on judges at the moment. Uh, in either case, uh, either the case will be adjourned, or it will continue without your further participation. If all you're doing is standing there saying, "Are you under, uh, are you acting under your oath?" Answer my question. Um, if it's adjourned, then the same question be, can be asked at the resumption. <coughs> If you get charged with contempt of court, or with contempt of court, and they call the police, and the police take you away and charge you with contempt of court, when you go back into court, what's the first question they're going to ask? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if continued, if the case is continued, they'll make an order. Yeah, yeah. But it will not say that the judge was acting under oath when they made the order. In fact, the judge's name may even be omitted. Have that. In this case, the order can be sent back to the court managers with a covering letter saying, get the judge to confirm with corresponding signature that he, was, he or she was acting under their oath of office at the time. Otherwise, I will be entitled to ignore this order as unlawful. Can't you write a bill? Sorry? Can't you write a bill if they give you an order? Come on to that. Come on to that. Uh, at the moment, Thus far, examples of this have gone dead. In other words, nothing more heard. It's like, oh, oh. Judges out of office. First one is, well, you know, whatever. I, whoever, do swear by Almighty God that I will be, I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen, at the, uh, Elizabeth II. Her ears and successors according to law. Law, oh, that's interesting. Doesn't say according to legal, does it? And it actually is basically saying that they're therefore taking an oath underneath the Queen's coronation oath where she swore under God to help me God. Now, the second oath, well, the judges take, they take two. I, whoever, I swear by Almighty God that I will well and truly serve our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth II. She's not the only sovereign, there's loads of sovereigns in this room, by the way. Uh, how can I say that? <coughs> how can I say you're all sovereigns? It's interesting, isn't it? What was a coronation oath? She took a coronation oath in 1953. What were you? There's a lot of people here that might have lied. I was. There's a few people that probably were. What was it? <coughs> what was a coronation oath? It was a solemn binding contract. She, sir, she swore under God to protect us. <laughs> to serve us and protect us and in return we gave her sovereignty which included the royal prerogative to assent to statutes and to dissolve parliaments if we created <coughs> rubbish parliaments she could dissolve them okay well, how can we give her her sovereignty if we don't have it to give her? You can't give somebody something you don't own. If I only have an apple, I cannot give you an orange. And if I only have an apple, I can't give you two. I can't give you what I don't possess in the first place. So if she became sovereign because we... Get, she walked into Westminster Abbey as the eldest daughter of the late king. She came out of Westminster Abbey, Abbey as the Sovereign Queen of England. <coughs> the only thing that took place in Westminster Abbey was somebody walking around with a Father Christmas outfit on, uh, say, saying to her, do you solemnly swear this and solemnly swear that?